Hello, I'm Erie Mills, Artistic Director of the Livermore Valley Opera. Welcome to our Valentine concert, featuring soprano Sarah Cambage and tenor Kyle van Schoonhoven. Both artists are former Merilla Opera Program members and Adler Fellows. Sarah made her LVO debut as Amelia in Verdi's A Masked Ball in March 2018 and Kyle debuted as Lenski in Tchaikovsky's Eugene Onegin in the fall of 2019. LVO's music director Alexander Katzman accompanies and he makes the piano sound like an orchestra. This concert not only includes selections that are highly romantic in both music and text, but they are also sung by two artists in love. No need to worry about social distancing for this concert. You will hear two highly charged duets, one from Puccini's Tosca and the other from Wagner's Die Walküre. You'll also hear an aria from Eugene Onegin and a beautiful song by Joseph Marx to round out our Isn't It Romantic theme. We want to thank Nick Liang at Uncle Yu's at the Vineyard in Livermore for being our concert sponsor. Between February 13th and the 18th, if you mention the Livermore Valley Opera when ordering takeout, you'll receive a 10% discount. This discount is also included on the special four-course Valentine dinner for two. If you want to know the answer to, isn't it romantic? I can tell you it certainly is. Thank you so much for joining us and enjoy the concert.
Я люблю вас, я люблю вас, Ольга, как одна безумная душа. Yeah. 
My name is Kyle Van Schoonhoven. My name is Sarah Cambage. And uh, thank you for watching our performance tonight. Absolutely. Um, actually, my mom was really into opera when I was a kid. And so when she'd be driving me to my grandmother's house where I stayed while she went to work, um, we'd be listening to like the three tenors. And apparently when I was really little, I could tell the difference between the three. I don't know if that's true or not, <laughs> but um, opera's always been really huge in my family. We like music here in the Van Schoonhoven family. We we didn't know what classical music was. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. My 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 parents, you know, we always have listened to music. Um, you know, really enjoyed going to Shays in Buffalo, like it's like the Performing Arts Center in Buffalo when I was a kid. Um, you know, the the rock concerts and stuff you do in high school, but no classical music, um, no opera. Um, but yes, music in our home for sure. Well, and you were later getting into to classical music. Later. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's not really, unless you go looking for it in the U.S., it's kind of a harder thing to find, I think. So if it's not part of the culture, um, I said in your hometown is there classical music. I mean, we do have the Palace Theater, which is a um, old opera house style building in our, like on our main street. But I hadn't really seen an opera until I was in school um, in an opera which is hard to watch if you're up there. <laughs> uh, actually, my uh, the first opera I ever saw, too, was uh, when I was in. I was in the kids' chorus for Carmen, and I uh, I still remember going and being able to watch, like, Mikael Azaria or watching Carmen and just being in complete awe of this art form uh, to the point where I was super excited that my first actual role when I went off to college was Michaela in Carmen. So it was a little full circle. My first opera that I saw um, that I actually sat for was Humperdinck's Hansel and Gretel. And I think it's funny because uh, there's a Sandman in that and I may have slept a little. I did not sleep through Carmen. Uh, Vancouver, of course, where I'm from. Um, I'm from a small suburb outside, well, small city outside New Westminster. And uh, so being right close to Vancouver, there's Vancouver Opera, there's Vancouver Recital Society. I was in the Vancouver Bach Choir uh, for about 10 years uh, before going off to college. So I started voice lessons really young. The conductor came up to my mom and was like, you got to get her in voice lessons. Um, but I think I was eight or yeah, eight. And I started studying with Patricia Plumley in Vancouver and um, it, it kind of took off and I knew from that moment that, you know, I, I want to sing classically and I want to sing opera. It, it was early. I, I liked music theater very much, but it was early when it hit me. Yeah, I was definitely a music theater kid. I was not, I was not a uh, opera kid. I might not even still be an opera kid. I don't know. <laughs> well, actually, I... Um... I remember the, the same choir conductor who suggested that I uh, get a voice teacher. She, I guess she was talking to all of us kids in the kids chorus there um, and in the, the juniors and was saying, oh, you know, sing like me. I, maybe she was frustrated with us. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, she was an operatic soprano, is an operatic soprano, Marisa Gaitan. And uh, the minute she said that. I was like, okay. And so of course I, I tried to sing like her and, uh, and my voice came out kind of operatic. So it was immediate. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, for me, it was, um, yeah, I loved singing in high school, but I never, didn't really know what opera mm -hmm. was. I think I had seen an opera singer come into like our high school chorus once or twice. Um, you know, but they're like college opera singers. They were, I didn't never experience what an opera was. And, um, you know, I loved singing and, and I really loved music theater, but being a bigger guy, uh, I was just like, I'm, I'm not going to be, they're not, they're not going to hire me to dance and they're not going to hire me to do all that stuff. So I was like, how, what do I do to go to school for singing? And I, so I went to school for singing uh, in all honesty, not completely understanding it was going to be 98% classical study of, of voice. Again, I just was not part of the culture where I'm 
from, at least not in my family. Um, so I, I loved singing. I went to school for it, but I, my first degree is actually in music education. Um, and I went there and to be completely honest, it wasn't until, um, a little bit into my actual time at Fredonia did I actually decide I wanted to try to be an opera singer uh, or a classical singer at all. Um, I found it quite boring at the beginning. Um, and then I realized, <laughs> I found it, it just did. I, I went to, uh, I just had never been exposed to it. And, um, you know, I just, it's hard to listen to stuff like opera and classical music if you're coming into it completely green. Um, but it wasn't until I went to see um, Fredonia um, did a performance of Handel's Messiah. And I know it's not opera. And it's certainly not Wagner, but it is, um, (laughs) but it is, um, it was done at such a high level that it literally floored me. It was with a full, um, you know, regiment of, uh, of, of orchestra players and the full, um, gauntlet of, um, Fredonia choir singers and, um, which has a world renowned choir program. Um, and it was just like, it just completely blew me away. And I just didn't know music could do that um, at the acoustic level. I always assumed it had to be mic'd or you needed to, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. But it wasn't really until that moment did I want to aspire to do that. English. German. English. All the diphthongs? I love it. I it's think chewy. It's, I mean, for me personally, I... I mean, again, not coming from a culture where I heard a lot of music in different languages, it was mainly English. It was with the language I learned to sing in. It's how I learned to use my voice first. Um, and as a result, I love it. You know, if you're a classical, you know, trainee, the, the way is to throw you into Italian right off the bat. Um, and Italian feeds into, I mean, if you study the history of opera, it kind of feeds into German opera and it feeds into French opera. Um, as it originated there. Um, so it makes a lot of sense for that to be the starting point. Um, and then you can kind of pick your favorite of those mm-hmm. three. But as a result, English kind of gets left out because it's, it, it's uh, um, yeah, but I love it. I love it. I think it's amazing. Um, I, you bring a lot of bad habits to English that you wouldn't bring to other languages, but being able to communicate every single word and every emotion and, and know exactly what you're saying, not this memorizing what you're saying but actually knowing why you're saying it um obviously we're not fluent in five languages um or ten languages or however many languages we've sung in but um having that control um over the the language uh, obviously the more fluent i become in german that will become my second favorite language um but uh, and i'm i mean i'm far away from that benchmark <laughs> but yeah i love it um you know, I, I don't think I would have ever said German many years ago. I um, actually, before going to Marilla, I had never really sung in German. I had, I had sung art songs and things like that, some leader, but um, never actually a German aria, really. So uh, when we uh, we did Marilla, we did the Lohengrin. Um, that was kind of my first kind of venture into the German rep, and it, it, the music fit so nicely. Well, making my role debut as Amelia in Bala was a dream come true. Um, it, it's one of those huge Italian roles. It, actually, it was my first Verdi aria, the Eccolori do Campo. Um, I was auditioning for a summer program and they needed either a Wagner or a Verdi. And I didn't think I was quite ready for, for Wagner yet. Um, and so I, I, I picked the, um, well, my teacher picked, um, the Verity and was like, oh no, you should do this. First I brought the Simon Volkenegger and he was like, no, nah, you, you gotta do, you gotta do Zambalo. And you know, it fit like a glove. It was like, aha, this is, this works. I get it. And so to get to do the whole role with orchestra in such an intimate theater and such great colleagues and staff and everyone at production, it was amazing. Um, you know, it, it had everything we needed and we brought so much more to the table too. Um, the cast was sensational. So I, I feel really fortunate to have gotten to 
to debut my role there at Livermore. Um, hopefully I'll get to do it again at some point because it's still my favorite, one of my favorite roles. Yeah, I mean, I think Lenski is like the perfect role yeah. um, because it's like, you're only there for two acts and then you get to go have dinner in the third. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, uh, no, but it's, he's just, it's a complete transformation mm -hmm. um, of a character in not a whole lot of stage time. If you actually break it down, it, he's really only out on stage for maybe a half an hour total. And it's not a short, it's not a short opera. Um, but he makes a big punch, you know, with his aria and then the arioso, which is part of the, the, the program. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he starts at that arioso, which is all about being in love and all about, you know, he, they have the formal greeting of Yalu Bluvas, and then it turns into Yalu Blu Tebia, which is like the, the, I mean, I'm sorry for my Russian out there. I'm sorry, sorry, maestro. Um, but, um, but it turns into this more, you know, he, this transformation, he starts like super proper, super formal. And before the end, he's just stripped bare down to the wires. And he, you know, is willing to die for his honor and for Olga um, mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And um, getting to sing a role, especially um, one like Lenski, which is more thought of as like a lyric role when I've kind of started to be uh, thought of more in the dramatic realm. That being said, I, I, I still sing a lot of really high lyric stuff. I, um, but it was one of the first like, you know, roles like it that I've got to do um, where I, I got to kind of feel like untethered. I could kind of go out there and be myself and kind of experiment with what it was I wanted that role to be and having that kind of protection from um, Maestro uh, Katzman and, um, you know, Iria obviously like guiding me through, mm -hmm. but giving me permission to make choices. And, um, you know, and I got to work with a, a great cast. I mean, they don't hire slouches there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, a, you know, really, really um, amazing.
Wonderful concert, and it was romantic, wasn't it? This concert is now on LVO's YouTube channel, so please tell your family and friends about it. In March, LVO will begin our Triple Treat 2021 online concert series. We'll premiere one concert each month beginning March 13 and continuing April 10 and May 8. We hope to see you then, so please mark your calendars. We offer these online concerts free of charge, but if you would like to donate, please go to lvopera.com. Thank you again, stay healthy, 
and we look forward to seeing you soon.